In our modern communication society, mobile phones are a part of everyday life, even for young children. In this film, we want to show you how phoning with a mobile phone, with and without a Memon transformer, impacts on human body functions. The Neuboyan Therapy Center, with its six therapists, two doctors and four alternative practitioners, and a pleomorphia laboratory, was an obvious choice for this task. It's an independent institution and can draw on super-regional, interdisciplinary expertise. As a popular speaker who gives regular lectures through publications in scientific journals, his work as a trainer of therapists, and his book, Candidalism, Eckhart Scheller is held internationally in high repute. In August 2007, under his supervision, a test that had already been widely and frequently performed was repeated and documented. My name is Eckhart Scheller. I come from an old family of alternative practitioners in Hamburg, now in the fourth generation. This family was known as the Herb Meyers. They lived in Hamburg for many years. A lot of them were alternative practitioners and doctors, and they still have a good reputation. Of course, this clan of alternative practitioners left me a legacy, but it wasn't until later that I could take it up. At first, I was completely against it and made my own way, as an artist, a painter, through the study of art and training in other fields. I spent a lot of time abroad and had no desire to become an alternative practitioner. But later, through an illness of my own, my legacy caught up with me. Then I made my way through training as an alternative practitioner and into actual practice. I was able to help myself and, since then, many thousands of other people to overcome their illnesses. I've been running this practice now for 13 years in various places in Germany. Here at the moment we're a therapy center with six therapists. The center has grown fast and there are now four alternative practitioners and two doctors working here. It's a flourishing, rapidly expanding therapy center, holistically organized, and at the heart of it all is, of course, our dark field microscope and the radionic testing. I think I've given you enough information about myself. So we'll continue now with the blood test of the two subjects who give us their drop of blood here. Dark field microscopy shows us the living blood very subtly here as a very distinct reflection of the microcosm human being. And I never fail to be fascinated by the transparent detail in which blood is visualized here. That is, we can explore in depth as well, and also study the blood very precisely in three dimensions. And that allows us to observe the smallest details extremely accurately. This here is a Zeiss Axioscope, an extremely high-resolution microscope made by Zeiss. It's generally considered the best dark field microscope, unfortunately also the most expensive. But the image is simply great. In this case, we can say that the blood is very easy to analyze. It's very free-flowing. You could say that's what it ought to look like. The frequency of symbionts is high. They occur like snowflakes, and the cells flow very freely. So now we'll take a drop of blood. We'll take it from the far side of the fourth finger, because the number of nerves here is minimal, and this is where the skin is thinnest. Now I take a drop of blood from our subject. It's very good. The cells are flowing freely. There's a lot of oxygen in the cells. There are relatively few symbionts, but they're optimally organized. So now we have my colleague, Mr. Hoffmann, here. And we'll take two drops of blood from him, too, under the same conditions. Here we have the drop of blood from our second subject. 
Some slight stress is visible, although the symbiotic activity is optimal, and we would also classify this blood as good. Well, I think we should let our subject make a phone call, so that you can demonstrate, after a quarter of an hour now, any changes in the blood. Let's take a second blood sample here to ascertain the optimal conditions. In this drop of blood we have the same conditions. The taking of the blood sample was optimal. That is, here too, we see a wafer-thin film that's identical with the first blood sample. Here we see the blood of our first subject after he had been phoning for a while. And we can clearly see a negative influence. The blood is severely stressed, with clotting and a massive regression of the symbionts. And now the blood of our second subject. And here it's plain that even after phoning for a relatively short time, the blood is extraordinarily clotted. A remarkable rouleau formation, very inadequate symbiont activity. It's obvious that this blood has been severely influenced. So we'll continue to document, as now for example, what a blood test looks like with a shielded mobile, just to see whether the same phenomena occur and whether this interference suppression is actually visible in this way. And now, when we took the third blood sample after these two subjects had phoned with the shielded mobiles, the result was extremely surprising for all of us. That is, it looked very harmonious and balanced, with the symbionts flurrying around and the cells floating very elastically and softly, without any congestion. It was visible, and you almost had to say that this chip has a therapeutic effect on our blood's environment. How incredible! Man müsste beinahe sagen, dass hier dieser Chip eine therapeutische Wirkung auf unser Blutmilieu hat, erstaunlicherweise. In conclusion, I would like to add that in this study there was no shielding. These mobiles were only equipped with the transformer. Nothing else was done, and nevertheless, we achieved this truly remarkable result.